this lecture we will talk about a technique called open circuit time constant uh, technique this technique is used to find out the upper cutoff frequency of the amplifier frequency response so to understand uh, uh, why we uh, need this technique let us uh, draw a typical frequency response of an amplifier so we have seen that the magnitude response in db looks like uh, something like this that means uh, we get the maximum possible gain a a not only over a certain uh, uh, what is called mid band frequency range that means uh, in this region and if you go beyond this either in high frequency or towards low frequency gain is going to reduce so it becomes important to specify this range omega l to omega h where the amplifier should be used so for that uh, we define what is called uh, minus g db omega l and omega h so in that case what we do is so this y axis is in db so we say that when this gain has reduced by 3 db then we define this uh, lower cutoff frequency and upper cutoff frequencies so instead of uh, having this in usual way like this what we do is we now say that amplifier should be used over this band omega l to omega h so this is lower cutoff frequency and this is higher or upper cutoff frequency so if you see data sheet of uh, any commercial amplifier this bandwidth will be usually specified so one thing will be that uh, how do we define the uh, 3 db why we say 3 db because uh, we have already seen that y axis is uh, 20 log magnitude of a so when we take this uh, value at either omega l or omega h this value is going to be uh, half of this value or rather 10 log so when so that will imply 20 log of mod a is equal to 3 db rather minus 3 db so when we say that uh, a gain gets reduced by a factor of square root 2 then we stop using the amplifier that means uh, we don't use in the region where gain is less than 1 by square root 2 and in terms of uh, uh, its magnitude square this value uh, turns out to be uh, 1 by 2 and why we take 1 by 2 is uh, because you know that uh, this is defined as vo by vi and when you take square this becomes square and now suppose this VU and VI they are fed to the same register then the power that they will uh, receive will be given by 
this much. Mm -hmm. Right, so when we say that this is equal to one by two, that means we are saying that compared with the maximum power that uh, will get delivered to a load of value R, power at uh, these extreme points will be half. So when amplifier starts delivering half of the maximum power that it can deliver, uh, then we say that uh, we have reached the either upper or the lower uh, uh, frequency cutoff frequency of the amplifier. So this is the region why uh, we define uh, minus 3 dB cutoff frequency. Now you can see that uh, given an amplifier, it becomes uh, important to get a quick estimate of omega H and omega L. And uh, so one way of doing this is uh, Finding omega h requires basically finding out the voltage gain formula or the gain transfer function and then uh, equating it to 1 by square root 2 and then solving this equation. Or this will also get translated to this thing. So once you know the transfer function, you set up this or this equation and solve here, and that will give you omega h. But here you can see that solving this equation might not be easy. In general, it will be very cumbersome. So what is required is now finding out uh, approximate technique, which will allow you to find out this omega h quickly. And uh, it will also possibly uh, tell you which of the components in the amplifier are responsible for reducing this omega H. Ideally, what we would like is, we would like this omega H to be as high as possible so that the amplifier can be used over a wider uh, band or it can handle even the higher input frequencies. So we need uh, two things. First, uh, approximate value of omega h. Ideally, of course, we want exact value of omega h, but as I pointed out here, uh, you can see that effort involved will be very high. So what we want is, so uh, if there are technique using which we can uh, get uh, approximate value with less effort. So it is to reduce the effort. That is why we are going for this technique which was mentioned in the title of this course. And not only that, as a designer, I would also like to know that uh, what are the capacitors? We already know that all the internal capacitor of MOS are responsible for reducing the gain at higher frequency. So we know that this omega H is definitely affected by the internal capacitor of the MOS. So we would also like to know that which capacitor or which capacitors are uh, playing major role in reducing this omega h so that we can do something uh, about it so not only we want a uh, uh, technique with less which we give us the omega h with less effort we also want to know uh, which most capacitors are mostly responsible for reducing omega h. So ideally we would like a uh, higher and higher value of omega h. So this technique, open circuit time constant technique, this actually fulfills both the requirement. It uh, will give us the approximate value of omega h and we will see that this uh, 
approximation becomes more and more accurate and in fact becomes exact under certain conditions uh, for the circuit. And it will also tell uh, which capacitor to take care of so that omega H doesn't get reduced much. So we'll now see that what is this uh, OCT technique. So in general, uh, transfer function or the amplifier gain, especially the high frequency gain. So this is So what we do, we uh, first draw the high frequency model of the amplifier, given amplifier, and then try to find out the uh, transfer function. And in that transfer function, we apply this uh, OCT technique. So what it says is that suppose we have derived the high frequency transfer function of the amplifier. So in general, what uh, this will look like is it will have both numerator and denominator and denominator will be something like this 1 plus B1S plus B2S square so on so forth up to BN SN. So this is the uh, typical denominator and uh, in general numerator will be like this. So this is the most general uh, transfer function that one can get. <clears throat> so this uh, OCT technique, it says is that <clears throat> in the denominator, the coefficient B1 is exactly equal to sum of various time constants where tau i is time constant for for one of the capacitors for let us say ith capacitor in the high frequency High frequency model of the circuit. So, as I pointed out, uh, we have to first draw the high frequency model of the circuit, and in that circuit, find out the uh, uh, time constant for every capacitor, and that will give us the uh, this B1, which is the coefficient of the first order term in the denominator, and this equation is exact. You will not see the proof of this. We will just uh, accept it and use it. So now how do we find out time constant for various capacitors that uh, appear in the high frequency model? <clears throat> so this time constant will be equal to the that particular capacitor multiplied by its corresponding Thevenin resistance. And what is this uh, RTHI that we will find out? So this Thevenin resistance is found out by doing uh, these steps. First is uh, remove all independent from the model and this is obvious also from the definition of typical definition of uh, Thevenin resistance when we have any circuit we try to find out Thevenin resistance this is what we do so this is not very surprising step 
Second is the important step, which actually leads to the name of this technique also. So it says that when we are trying to find out time constant for the ith capacitor, what we do is we remove all the other capacitors existing in the circuit. And uh, in fact, this CI is also removed, but it is replaced by unknown voltage source to find out RTF. So we open circuit. That means remove all other capacitors. In fact, uh, CI will also be removed, but uh, we write it separately and substitute CI, that means remove it by voltage source Vx and find RTHI. So actually we remove all the capacitors from the circuit, but for CI, we try to find out uh, corresponding RTHI and that we do by connecting one voltage source and then finding out how much current it is driving and the ratio of that is going to give rise to RTHI. So the name of this technique you can see actually comes from this uh, open circuiting that we do for all the capacitors in the high frequency model of the amplifier. So this technique uh, gives me basically the coefficient of the first order term in the denominator. But we are yet to uh, find out how this technique can be used to find out omega h. Because that th this is our primary objective. So now, up till now, everything is exact also. So now approximation uh, will come into picture when we try to relate uh, this B1 with omega H. So what we will do, we will start with a simpler case and then try to see that uh, how these two things can be related. So let us consider the simplest uh, possible case. So we are not trying to prove, we are trying to take few examples to convince us or rather find out the relation between uh, B1 and omega H. So what we have is one pole amplifier. That means the high frequency transfer function is like this. Yeah. So here you can see that uh, there is a no zero in the numerator. Numerator has only one constant and the denominator is only a first order in S. That means it has only one pole. So here pole is at one by B1. So this is the simplest scenario for uh, an amplifier. And suppose it is this scenario. In that case, uh, OCT, so this implies B1 will be equal to summation tau i is equal to summation C i R T H i. So this suppose we have already succeeded in finding out. Now, what is our goal? Our goal is to find out omega h. So from here, we convert our transfer function to in the frequency form like this. And uh, we have to now find out omega h. So by definition, omega h is that frequency at which its magnitude will be equal to square root of uh, one by square root two times of the maximum value. So 
this a naught is the maximum or rather let us say the peak peak of the transfer function so it is this equation that we will have to solve to find out omega h so now from this equation 1 you can see that uh, a h j omega h is going to be a 0 by 1 plus b 1 j omega h and this should be equal to square root 2 times of the peak value so this implies 1 plus j b 1 omega h magnitude should be equal to square root 2 right so this you can see that the magnitude is going to be 1 plus b1 square omega h square is equal to square root 2 so here you can see that it is b1 omega h square is equal to 1 so this says that omega h will be equal to 1 by b1 and uh, omega uh, b1 we have already estimated from the open circuit time constant uh, technique so this is the relation between omega h and uh, b1 or uh, various capacitors so here this equation is exact there is no approximation involved until now the only approximation here you can see is that taking an amplifier which has one pole type of transfer function so one might have to do certain approximation to arrive such a simple transfer function or in some rare cases uh, without even approximation also one can uh, arrive at this type of transfer function so if we have this kind of transfer function then omega h is simply inverse of uh, sum of all the time constants of the circuit so this is the most favorable case and uh, if you see the frequency response the plot of a h so this is going to be like this minus 20 db per decade and this value we know from transfer function is going to be equal to uh, 1 by b because this we have to write in standard form so in the standard form this will be a0 divided by 1 plus s divided by 1 by b1 so here you can see that the first pole omega p is equal to 1 by b1 so in this case so uh, this is going to be 1 by b1 and this also turns out to be the 3 db upper cutoff frequency for the amplifier and in this case if you see the exact transfer function uh, or if you perform the experiment it will look like something like this so here you can see that so this gap is going to be uh, 3 db so that is why in this case so uh, the result is exact now let us take a second case where scenario is uh, uh, more general and we will see that uh, in this case the result is going to be approximate so here we are now going to consider two pole system so we have a high frequency uh, response which is like this 1 plus a b1 s plus b2 s square so we again have uh, two uh, second order denominator and there will be two poles now 
and we know that this can be factorized and uh, we can write it like this s by omega p1 into 1 plus s by omega p2 right so here also if you want uh, to find out omega h what we will have to do is uh, set up this equation with the help of uh, this equation 2 and then solve for that so here you can see that uh, solution uh, is going to involve uh, some more effort but now let us try to see that uh, how this equation can be approximated so in terms of pole what we find is that this will be equal to a naught divided by 1 plus 1 by omega p1 plus 1 by omega p2 s plus 1 by omega p1 omega p2 s square <clears throat> so here what we see is that uh, we have second order term and uh, in the case one we saw that when we had only first order term in that case uh, there was exact relation between uh, omega h and coefficient v1 right so here what we find is so uh, b1 is equal to 1 by omega p1 plus 1 by omega p2 and b2 is 1 by omega p1 omega p2 so now let us see that uh, in this scenario uh, if omega p1 is significantly smaller than omega p2 that means we have uh, dominant pole kind of uh, scenario in that case uh, we know that b2 is going to be very small and the transfer function can be approximated to that of a first order And once you have done this, uh, what we find here is uh, V1, which is uh, given by uh, sum of all the transfer functions, uh, y. and uh, we have already seen the relation between V1 and omega h. Omega h is always, uh, omega h is, uh, in this case, approximately going to be equal to V1, which will be equal to sum of all the time constants right so we see that uh, uh, when we have two poles and if the system can be approximated by a single pole system like this then in that case so uh, omega h will be approximately equal to 1 by v1 and we know that this relation is exact but this is approximation so here we see that uh, approximation starts entering into the finding out omega h when uh, we have uh, multiple pole uh, system but the approximation will be better and better if there is a dominant pole kind of scenario right so what we are basically saying is that if we have say two pole system like this minus 20 minus 40 here this is omega p1 omega p2 and if this omega p2 is far uh, further and further away from omega p1 then this can be approximated to this scenario omega p1 So there will be further decay in this uh, uh, transfer function, but that will occur at a very high frequency. So in the lower region, in sufficiently lower region, this graph will be, or rather this graph will be approximately same as that of the 
single pole system. And for the single pole system, we have already seen that this omega P1 is actually equal to omega H is equal to 1 by B1. Right. So now we can have as many as pole we want in the circuit or as many as pole occurs in the circuit. But if uh, one of the poles or the smallest pole dominates, if it is significantly smaller compared with the all other poles, then uh, uh, this uh, result that we obtained using this formula will be more and more accurate. Right. So we can now uh, generalize this and say that uh, higher cutoff frequency omega h is approximately equal to 1 by b1 or approximately equal to time constants, some of the time constants for, uh, for all the capacitors. And this uh, approximation is better For dominant pole cases. So, what we have just now said is that if we have a transfer function like this, or in other words, in terms of uh, poles, if we have this kind of scenario, and if the pole is dominant, then result is accurate. What about if zeros are also there? For example, suppose we have the simplest case like this. Suppose we have now zeros also, then uh, uh, what will be the level of accuracy that we obtained? <clears throat> so in this case, uh, there will be one zeros also. So zeros in terms of zeros, we can write like this. So see, keep in mind that what we ultimately want is this kind of response. So if any response can be approximated to this first order response, then the result that you will get is going to be <coughs> more and more accurate. So what zeros will do, this zero will introduce a plus 20 dB upward slope, right? And what we want here is a minus 20 dB slope, and actually it should continue uh, till as large frequency as possible. So even if you have zeros, and suppose this omega z is greater than all the poles, so there are n number of poles, but zero is greater than all the poles. In that case, what we will get is a transfer function like this, so there will be minus 20 dB, minus 40 dB, so on and so forth. And then zero will simply try to uh, further increase it here. So this is the location of omega z. And these are the locations of various poles. Here. So here also you can see that uh, this graph can be approximated to the first order, at least in this region, right? So if zero is not very close to the dominant pole and if it is away and further and further away from uh, majority of the pole, then even in this kind of transfer function, the omega h that you will get by finding out omega h 
the transmission is equal to B1 is going to be quite agreed. So this anyway gives a uh, uh, approximate result for the omega h, and the uh, result is very good if we have the approximation uh, possible to that of uh, first order system. So this is about the first advantage of this technique. Second advantage that uh, we certainly want this to be as high as possible. And uh, for that, uh, uh, we have to also find out which of the capacitors are more responsible for that. So since uh, this omega h is inverse of sum of various time constants, so obviously the largest time constant will have the uh, maximum degrading effect on omega h. It will try to make omega h smaller and smaller. So as a designer, then one can try to do something about uh, those time constants, which are the largest possible. And uh, we know that time constants, they are largest because of either C or because of RTH. So one can try to then try to reduce uh, one or both of these quantities so that omega H can be increased by reducing either CI or this uh, RTHI. Okay. So this takes care of the uh, second aspect also. Now what we are going to do, we will uh, revisit the common source uh, amplifier case. And uh, for that case, we will try to find uh, what is the uh, omega H. So we are going to take uh, this circuit, which we have already analyzed. And for that, we have found out the uh, transfer function also. Recall that uh, when we use this circuit, uh, there will be uh, those uh, biasing networks also involved. Okay. For example, we will have this R1, R2. And not only that, we will also have a, a capacitor here. But since we are going to consider the uh, high frequency model, so the CI will get short circuited. And that is why I did not show the CI in this uh, uh, equivalent circuit. Not only that, uh, what we will do, uh, we will for a moment uh, try to overlook R1 and R2, and then we will see that their effect can be very easily incorporated with the help of this technique. But if you try to include R1, R2, and try to find out the transfer function, that will be a lot more uh, uh, involved compared with uh, finding out uh, without R1 and R2. In fact, we have already done both. So, so that is why we are going to take this circuit. So what this technique says is that uh, our objective is finding out omega h. So the first step is uh, draw the high frequency model. So for the high frequency model, we draw the uh, MOS with uh, all its capacitors. So here we have C G D and here we have CGS. And since uh, source here is grounded, so source to bulk capacitor will not appear here. However, there will be uh, 
drain to bulk capacitor C D B. So this is the high frequency model of the MOS. And now we include the external registers RD and then we include RS. And this is uh, external source. So this is the high frequency model of uh, the common source amplifier. Now we have to apply OCTC technique in this case to with uh, estimate or approximate value of omega f. So in the first step of this technique, uh, this is the first step. Second step, we uh, remove all the external independent uh, sources. So what we will have to do is uh, short circuit this source. So we have now removed it. And here you can see that there are three capacitors. So there will be three uh, time constants involved with this uh, circuit. So in step two, short circuit VI. In step three, <coughs> we have to uh, find a time constant one by one. So here there are three capacitors. Three time constants will be there. So for each of them, we have to find out the RTH. So So for CGS, we want to know what is uh, RTH. So for this case, we have to, as the technique says, we have to remove all the capacitors. So we remove all the capacitors, right? And since we are trying to find out the RTH for CGS, so in place of this capacitor, we put a known voltage source Vx. And then because of this uh, Vx, we try to find out what is going to be RTH. So because of Vx, let us try to find out this Ix. So this is our circuit. Here you can see that uh, Ix uh, will flow towards Rs because uh, towards drain circuit is open circuited. So in this case, uh, uh, analysis is easy. Vx is going to be simply Ix into Rs. That means uh, Rth1 for CGS is going to be RS. Right. And this one can find out from uh, this circuit also. If you try to find out the impedance looking uh, at this node, because uh, here you can see that the source is connected at the gate between gate and source. So if you try to find out the impedance looking into this gate node and between this ground, this will be sum of impedances uh, towards gate, which is going to be infinity, and towards RS. This is anyway shorted. This is going to be equal to RS. So there's no surprise that uh, this uh, RTH has turned out to be equal to RS. Now we try to find out uh, uh, RTH for C D B. 
so we will call it rth2 so this is rth1 so for this case uh, now what we will have to do we will have to again keep all the circuits open and this time we will have to connect our unknown source here and find out this ix input will continue to remain now grounded right so here gate to source is also open so again the current will in general get split into these two branches towards rd and uh, towards cgd right so out of uh, these two current direction we can see that the current uh, towards cgd is going to be zero and then uh, there is another possibility that is towards this uh, dependent current source but uh, here you can see that uh, since this part is isolated and open so vg is going to be zero vs is anyway equal to zero so vgs is equal to zero that means there will be no current uh, through this dependent current source that means whatever current ix flows it flows towards rd entirely so in this case uh, rth2 is simply going to be rd right and uh, from circuit also we could have uh, uh, found out this value by interpreting in this way so here you can see that that vx that we have connected here is basically connected uh, here like this so here you can see that this impedance is going to be parallel of towards rd and parallel towards uh, uh, into the drain of the mos and since uh, let me emphasize that we are considering lambda is equal to zero case so this impedance is going to be infinite this is going to be rd so the impedance uh, looking into drain is uh, simply going to be rd and that is what we have got here <coughs> now we have to find out uh, rth uh, for c g d so in this case so uh, we have to connect this uh, voltage source here between gate and drain and other components they are going to be open circuited yeah so this is uh, vx we have to find out ix and that is going to give rise to uh, rth3 for this uh, capacitor cgd right so here we see that uh, vx is v gate minus v drain so this is how we have uh, oriented our vx right so now we have to find out gate voltage drain voltage and then we can find out vx so let us try to find each of them separately so from this circuit we see that this is vg and vg will be related with uh, ix and rs so vg is equal to simply rs into ix right now about uh, vd so here uh, we have ix and then uh, here we have ig and there is a current io so we can write uh, kcl at uh, drain this node so there are three currents ix ig and io so kcl at drain gives us ix plus ig is equal to io so here we have ix ig is gm vg 
because source is grounded. So Vs is zero. So Ig is simply Gm into Vg and uh, Io is minus Vd divided by Rd. So from here, we have to find out uh, Vd so that we can substitute in equation one. from 1 ix plus gm or rather from 2 gm rs ix is equal to minus vd by rd so this is minus vd is equal to rd into ix plus gm rs ix So now we can use uh, two and three into equation one. So that is uh, Vx is equal to Rs Ix plus Rd Ix plus Gm Rs Ix. So this implies RTH3, which is equal to Vx by Ix, is equal to Rs plus Rd into Gm Rs. Right. So, in this case, we see that uh, this uh, threatening resistance, this is equal to Rs plus Rd plus an additional factor Gm Rs Rd. So this is scenario is similar to that uh, the output impedance looking from drain for the degenerated case. So here we see that uh, uh, this RO is more than the sum of this R0 and this RS. And that happens because uh, GM current circulates through this R0. So that gives rise to this kind of term. So here also we can see that uh, uh, there will be this uh, usual Ix. This is usual Ix flowing through both Rs and Rd. But now here you can see that there is one more current that uh, flows through Rd. It is this Ig because here they both ins are grounded. So the dependent current source is already pushing a current Ig through Rd. So that is why this uh, Io current experiences uh, now more resistance and that is why the resistance of Rd is now Rd plus GMRS. The same phenomena that occurs here. Right. So we now have a more impedance value and this is RTH. So now we can find out all the three time constant. So tau one is so CGS into RS. Tau two is CDB into RD. And tau three is so CGD into rs plus rd plus gm rs rd right now if you try to compare this result with the uh, transfer function that we calculated for the common source amplifier then we can see that uh, this one will be related with the coefficient B. Now, if you try to find out AH for the above circuit, this will turn out to be uh, equal to SCGD minus GM. This, in fact, we have already derived 
1 plus b s plus a s square. So that is what we wrote. And here, the coefficient b which we calculated in uh, one of the classes is equal to r s c g s plus r d c d b plus r s plus r d plus g m r s r d into c g d right so here we see that the it has two poles and it has one zero also uh, but the coefficient of b you can see that it is exactly equal to that but now saying that uh, the omega h is approximately equal to b so here approximation is involved at this location but once again this b what we have obtained here is uh, exact so this is obtained from the transfer function and uh, this you can see is uh, b obtained from uh, the oct technique b is going to be tau 1 plus tau 2 plus tau 3 right and this omega h is uh, going to be more and more accurate uh, uh, 3db frequency uh, if the zero if zero is uh, larger than the both the poles of uh, this uh, function not only that if uh, the smallest pole is very small compared with the uh, second pole and of course smaller than zero then this uh, approximation is going to be more and more accurate so this is going to be accurate for omega p1 much much less than omega p2 less than omega z right but nevertheless uh, this will give us good idea that uh, which one is more important here and uh, uh, some idea about the omega h and i would also like to now point out here that uh, there are three terms or the three time uh, constants out of this you can see that uh, this one is going to be the uh, dominating one because here it is the sum of rs rd gm multiplied by rs rd right so one can guess that it is the tau 3 or it is this capacitor which is going to be more responsible for reducing the omega h so it is here that uh, one will have to uh, put some effort to keep omega h uh, larger and larger. Yeah.